over the last, I don't know, 10 years or so, cryptocurrency has completely revolutionized the economic structure of the entire world. You've heard the stories of like the guy who sold 10,000 Bitcoin or gave 10,000 Bitcoin to buy us a pizza or someone having a wallet that they couldn't tap into that had like 10,000 Bitcoins that would be worth millions if not billions of dollars at this point. You may have also heard of like the Squid Game situation that happened about a year ago where there was the first like real public example of a meme coin being quote unquote rug pulled, which I'll talk about a little bit later. But what's crazy about cryptocurrency is the fact that even after all this time, it is still the wild, wild west of finances and economics. And if you don't play your cards right, you will get burned. And I have a lot of experience in cryptocurrency overall in the sense that like back in 2017, I was really deep into like, uh, I guess we're calling them shit coins. Um, I made an album for a coin called XVG, made some decent money off of it, was really heavy into it and kind of just fell off as the coin has kind of died out. And then, you know, you have the rise of Bitcoin. I think right now Bitcoin is worth like 60,000, maybe a little bit lower, $50,000 right now. This is crazy to think about when, you know, seven, eight years ago, it was worth $2. So there are people who are just, you know, creating generational wealth, changing their lives. But there's also a lot of people, probably even more people who have lost, you know, their life savings, all their money on the crypto. The reason why I even talk about this is because the, the, the recent phenomenon, it's not that recent of a phenomenon, this is becoming more and more popular and accessible, of meme coins. Now, when it comes to meme coins, it's different from meme stocks like AMC and GameStop because, you know, AMC and GameStop are giant companies that have stocks and assets and people. There's a whole structure and math and finances involved when it comes to like, you know, looking for short squeezes and things like that it involves interest and options and all kinds of fun stuff. There's like a structure there. There's regulations involved. So certain things can't happen or you can't just go make a company on robin hood and sell it to people but with meme coins and the phenomenon of meme coins what you're seeing is anybody who has any type of technological um, knowledge can go and make a meme coin right now and if you play your cards right you can make millions of dollars off of this but the the, the downside of this is the fact that you're seeing a rise of scammers. You're seeing the rise of people losing all their money to rug pulls. Now, the concept of a rug pull is is somebody making a coin and then putting all, like basically, let's say I make a coin right now and I buy up most of the shares or a large portion of the shares. Um, so I own a large portion of said coin, ideally one of the largest portions. And over time, as the stock, or sorry, as the coin rises in value, I can just pull away my liquidity and the coin drops. All those people lose their money who invested in the coin on the way up. And this is essentially famously what happened with the Squid Game coin where thousands of people lost their money to a rug pull like that because it happens instantly. And so you're seeing this phenomenon where people are figuring this out, where they can just go take a picture of their dog or take a picture of their cat, uh, hop on Pump Fund, make a coin, throw like, I don't know, 20, 30 bucks on this, pump it up on Twitter, pump it up on Telegram, and get people to invest in it, and then take out their liquidity, leaving hundreds, if not thousands of people, uh, basically shit out of luck on that investment. Now, that's just one of the many scams that exists in the meme coin world, but I think the issue comes down to the fact is that, like I said earlier, access accessibility, the fact that anybody can go and just make a coin right now. And you, what you're seeing with the phenomenon of meme coins is that this is purely psychological. There are no you can try and do uh, analytical charts. You can sit here and uh, look at the numbers and look at the candles and be like, oh, this is going to pop. But this is all psychological. And the reason why meme coins are so popular is the fact that they're so intrinsically tied to the culture of the Internet in the culture of society. The most, one of the most recent famous examples, and I'm not sure if people are even aware of this unless you're in the crypto space, is Hawk to a Girl. Yes, we all know Hawk to a Girl for being famous and going viral uh, for her, you know, her video of her talking about spitting on penises. But what you may not know is that she's one of many examples here, is that the crypto meme coin space created a coin 
based off of Haktua, literally called Haktua coin. And what ended up happening is that Haktua coin exploded to, I think, like five, six cents, something like that, which might not sound like a lot. But when you have millions and millions and millions of these Haktua coins in your wallet, you are suddenly a millionaire. And just as high as it went up, it went back down as the coin, as the meme of the hot tour girl started to like lose steam and not be as popular. And so that's like the crazy phenomenon behind these meme coins is the sense that it's really based off the psychological movement of the internet. And people are investing their entire life savings and doing all this for the hopes that they catch the next hot meme or they try to create the next hot meme. So anything that happens on the internet has probably has a coin attached to it i just saw a coin the other day about the turkish shooter called turkish shooter coin you see what i'm saying like you can literally i could take a picture of let's see what, what do i have uh blue lighter i could take a picture of this blue lighter and make it worth millions of dollars in a matter of hours and what's crazy about that is the fact that Obviously, there's a phrase that if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. And that's why I've been talking about the rug pulls. I'm talking about the telegram scams. I'm talking about all this stuff. And everybody just wants an opportunity to, to get rich. And I think the problem that we're having with the rise of meme coins is the fact that, you know, our economy is going to shit right now. Uh, inflation's at an all-time high. Minimum wage is not cutting it for a lot of people. Even people who are working good jobs with decent salaries are still struggling. But just knowing that someone is taking a picture of their fish and making a million dollars just by sitting in front of their computer, who else? Who, who would not try that, right? And so you're seeing this this rise of scams. You're seeing this rise of people exploiting the fact that there is money to be made in this now. My personal opinion when it comes to this, I think that meme coins overall are actually an amazing phenomenon because what you're seeing is you're monetizing the psychological thread of the internet. And I think that's beautiful when you say it like that. But when you get into the deep intrinsic uh, narrative of how people operate and the fact that everybody's just looking for that buck, you're seeing people take advantage of people. Sometimes these people have no idea what they're doing. They're just going into there because, you know, they saw hot to a coin on a Facebook group or something or whatever. And they're like, well, what the hell is this? Right. And I'm speaking from experience in the sense that, like I said, I was already in the crypto world uh, years ago. And so when I started to see this, I'm like, let me let me dive into this. Let me actually spend some decent quality time looking into how this works. And that's what I did for the last several weeks. I've been really deep in the crypto space. I've been participating in, in coin launches. I've been uh, working with CTOs. I've been making content for, uh, sorry, a CTO is a community takeover. So what a community takeover is, is when a coin is created. And like I said, a coin might get rug pulled. Someone might make a coin, pull out all the liquidity, but maybe the coin still has potential because it's a funny meme or maybe a lot of people invested in it and they don't want to see it fail or whatever. So what ends up happening is that a CTO is created. This is a community takeover. A community takeover is when basically everybody who's still in on the coin, they take the coin over. They, they pump money into it. They put the money into the advertising. They put money into the, the, the pump bots and all of the bullshit, um, hoping to save the coin so they can you know find that wealth that they're looking for before the developer pulled their rug. And there's a lot of CTOs. I would say that for every three to f or every ten coins that are made, three to four to five, maybe even six or seven of them end up either dead or CTO'd. Um, and that's because, like I said, people are just they're seeing this really easy money opportunity to where if you have enough money and you have enough time, you can hop on these sites, create these coins, and then just get out and get your liquidity. And um, it's it's a problem, man. <laughs> uh, People say that 99% of every coin that goes on pump fund ends up failing because of rug pulls, bad CTOs, or just whatever. And I've kind of witnessed this because like I said before, I've been really deep in the crypto space the last several weeks, uh, talking to CTO leaders, talking to dev leaders, working in these Telegram groups, really trying to figure out like the, the psychological nuances of how these coins actually operate and why they fail. And oftentimes, Every time it comes down to a variety of three different things. One is greed. People 
just seeing an opportunity to make money off of people who don't know any better or who are just innocent. And that's probably the worst. Two is incompetence. And when I mean incompetence, I'm not saying that these people are stupid. I'm saying that they just didn't know enough. And they didn't realize how much they were chewing off when it came to like paying for ads and raids and doing all this stuff to make the meme coin scene. Because unless the meme coin is like a, a cultural phenomenon, like hot to a girl, you have to push that coin to people. And so you'll have to like do raids on Twitter and spam a bunch of motherfuckers and or you have to like go and um, you know show your coin to people to get them interested in, into it to buy to buy into the coin and that can get pretty pricey um, if you're taking that route of marketing and putting money into it it can get really expensive and the the there's no guarantee that you're gonna actually make that money back just because you ran an ad on radium or you ran a bot you know what I'm saying or you got fatality with all these different things out here that doesn't guarantee anything and it's a little bit different because the mindset i think is different because when i hear these people to conversate they're not talking in uh united states dollars they're talking in soul they'll be like oh um no i dropped two or three soul so soul is short for solana which is uh a crypto stable coin that is used to to purchase the the other coins so if i wanted to go buy a meme coin right now I would typically speaking, you can use other coins, but Solana is the most popular. I would have to go on a, an exchange or get a wallet, purchase Solana, and then use Solana to go buy Hawk to a coin or BBC or you know, all these crazy coins that are out there. And so uh, what it comes down to is when people talk about these coins or talk about how they're purchasing stuff, they're not saying, oh, you know, the, I, I dropped $500. I dropped two hundred dollars. Just they'll say I dropped one soul. Right now, I think the current price of soul is around one hundred and fifty dollars. So when people say that, hey, I dropped two soul, they're saying that they dropped three hundred dollars. And <clears throat> when you start to like listen to these people conversate, they're like, oh yeah, you know, I just put twenty soul into this uh, coin, or you know, I dropped X soul, X amount of soul on this, X amount of soul on that. You start to realize like the cultural difference. I'm saying like people aren't seeing this as U.S. dollars. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm sure people are cashing out the coin and sending it to another wallet, exchanging it out and getting their money. But people are looking at the mindset of soul being the cool, the core currency you used to um, get your tokens. And so when you think about it that way, when you look at one soul, like I have, let's say somebody has, you know, 40,000 soul, right? That's a lot different when you, when you phrase it like that, not knowing damn well that 40,000 soul is going to be somewhere near, let's see, quick mass, uh, 40,000, I'm bad at math, I'm using calculator, times 15 is $600,000, right? And if you said it that way, like, oh, I, I, I put $600,000 into this coin, now I say it hits a little different, right? Um, and so it kind of puts like a little bit of a band-aid in the verbiage when people are talking about these, these rug pools and talking about all the money they put into these coins, et cetera, and so forth. And it's one of those things where I think that because yesterday and I'm not sure if people are watching this or not, but yesterday there's a situation where a uh, CTO leader got uh, basically his wallet drained via a scam and because he was running said CTO and all his coins were attached and they got stolen. He was basically just like, oh, well, you know, um, I can't run this coin anymore because I'm not invested in it and I don't have the money to get back into it. Um, some of the community donated him money, um, but he ended up still just moving on to his next project. Um, and we don't even know how true this story is, right? But what's interesting about it is the fact that because of the uh, the anonymous factor of it, the fact that you can hide behind a screen name, hide behind whatever, everything on here is only the only real public records that we have when it comes to these coins are our wallets. The, the crypto wallets that are attached because every crypto wallet purchase that you make every time you buy a coin is put on the blockchain. So every purchase that I, that I may have made with a coin or that someone else has made with that particular wallet, you could look at every single purchase. Now, that wallet doesn't have any other information. It doesn't say who owns the wallet. It doesn't have addresses. It doesn't have any other information. It's just simply a person just knowing that that wallet is attached. 
And so these these crypto exchanges like Pump Fund and all these other crypto exchanges, they try to be transparent. They are transparent about who's purchasing what and when they're purchasing it and how much of that uh, coin that person owns via percentages. But beyond that, you don't know anything. So trust and transparency becomes a major, major factor in the success of these coins because if you don't trust the developer if you don't trust the cto team if you don't trust the people the coin will not go it doesn't matter how much marketing you put into it it doesn't matter uh how cool the coin is it doesn't matter how many memes you make it doesn't matter who how many influencers you reach out to if you can't trust the coin to be successful based off of the people who are making it happen the coin will fail and i know this because i've watched dozens of coins fail over the last couple of weeks not due to the quality of the memes or quality of the, or the amount of money put into it but because people couldn't trust the coin to be successful because of the people who are running it and you don't know these people so it, what i end up seeing when it comes to these coins is that this, the the more successful coins have their developers and or their cto leaders doxed or verified to a point where it's like, I know this person and I trust this person. I trust this person's wallet. I trust this person's moves. He has a repeatable track record of doing the things the right way. And I've made money with this person. If you don't have that connection with this person, then you might be in a situation where you might get taken advantage of. Because as I said earlier, 99% of these coins that are being created are basically failing. And it's due to people being greedy. And I could rant about this for, for, I could go off for another 20, 30 minutes talking about like the politics and the nuances of it. But at the end of the day, I really wanted to make this video because one, I think that this needs to be talked about more. And I have a platform where I could speak on this thing. I know it's not quite in my niche of this, the content that I make here, which is why I'm actually considering making another channel that talks solely about cryptocurrency, talking about coins you can invest in, talking about uh, things that you might want to look out for, scams, how to buy coins, how to be safe about it, um, things to avoid, things to look out for. I'm considering doing that because I'm seeing how important it is to have that information available to people who are trying to dive into this because I don't think that this is going to slow down. I think that this is only going to become more and more a phenomenon, especially when you look at the ease of access. When I was doing cryptocurrency back in 2017, I saw like an old head saying this like back in my day when i was doing crypto er, it was a lot more difficult to go purchase these coins like you had to go through a variety of different steps to go to get your money in, into those wallets so you could buy those coins now you can literally just download an app put in your information buy the coin it's that simple now or you know coinbase is making it easy for you to transfer coins to wherever wallet you want to it's the ease of access is getting a lot lower which is good i guess but the, the knowledge set that comes with that is not increasing. And because of that, you're seeing people getting scammed. You're seeing people getting taken advantage of. You're seeing people losing a lot of money. And don't get me wrong, there's a lot of money to be made from this crypto. But what you also have to understand is that there are plenty of people who are smarter than you, have more access than you, and are willing to take advantage of you. And because of the fact that there is no regulations in this crypto space, and they can just hide behind a screen name, you just have to be really, 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 really careful about who you trust. And that could take some time, right? Like finding those right people. Even like if you go on Telegram and find the right people, you might be kicking it with a guy for two or three months. And then all of a sudden he takes advantage of you because he needed the money because the, the, the world economy is such shit right now. And for me, I'm an advocate of cryptocurrency. I think cryptocurrency, I think having a, a decentralized network of currency. I think people having a, a ease of access to be able to pay for things in different ways besides being attached to the gold standard or the US dollar or whatever is extremely important. I think that's the revolution of the next generation is cryptocurrency. Now, with that said, I don't necessarily think that we should have heavy regulations, but there needs to be some type of uh, accountability for these actions. I don't even think the people who did the Squid Game, uh, the famous Squid Game coin pool, got top i might have looked that up um but i think for the most part like those guys got away with it and most of these people who pull these rug pulls who are just hiding behind uh screen names or whatever they get away with it and even with the wallet situation even if you track a wallet i can make a wallet right now matter of fact i can make 10 wallets right now by using a telegram bot 
And I could use that bot to go start farming people and uh, tracking wallets and doing all kinds of stuff to where I don't even have to necessarily be sitting in front of my computer to, to take advantage of people. And I think that regulation should be highly considered, but at the same time, I don't trust the government to take cryptocurrency to a level of safety while also not taking advantage of the people. We're looking at Donald Trump, who uh, did the, crypt the Bitcoin conference, whatever, and he's talking about, oh, America's gonna mine all the crypto and America's gonna be the leader in, in Bitcoin. And say, like, bro, you're missing the point. You're missing the fucking point, my guy. That's not what it's about. It's not about that. And I think that that's going over the head of the people who are learning about this and seeing the dollar signs behind it. Because keep in mind, Bitcoin is worth over $50,000 right now. And there are people who invested in Bitcoin back in the day when it was three cents. I would invest. I invested in Bitcoin back in the day when it was like 10 cents, just fucking around on the Internet. And what's crazy about that is that if I kept those coins, I would be a multimillionaire. But it is what it is. And I think that what needs to happen is I actually don't even really know. And maybe you guys can help me if you're watching this and you're into crypto. Let me know your thoughts. I really want to know, like, what you think about the meme coin phenomenon. Um, how can we improve it? What are ways that we can really uh, make maximize the value of what these coins have to offer, or at least the concept of it? Because another thing about it is the fact that these coins, when used correctly, have utility purposes. I've seen people make video games from these coins. I've seen people do uh, fund nonprofits with these coins. I've seen people uh, launch their artistic careers with these coins like fund their like their artistic adventures with these coins i'm saying and it's not just about a picture of a dog you if done correctly or and put in the right hands it could change the world someone might use cryptocurrency as a way to like fund a way to research cancer uh treatments or feed people in africa or whatever but if people are going to keep getting rug pulled and getting taken advantage of, it's only going to have a bad rap to the point where we'll never get to the, the cool utilitarian purposes that these coins could have. It's only going to be given or put in a bad light to where people are like, fuck that. I don't want to mess with that anymore. And I don't know. I'm passionate about it because for me, I'm all about looking forward. I'm trying to figure out how can we make our people better? And I think cryptocurrency is a solution. But without some type of regulation or some type of accountability or some type of safety measures put into place to protect people from being hurt and ruining their lives, we're all doomed, bro. We're doomed. I don't know. But let me know what you think. If you guys think that I actually should make more videos or make a separate channel talking about crypto and all that, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, whatever. Make sure you guys follow me. I'll be back with more content. Stay safe out there, man. Love y'all. Be safe.